year what's going on everybody we're back with another episode of from my experience podcast this is rob i'm your host and the other host of the show biffers is in the has house hi guys yo um we're gonna get right to it we have not talked to y'all since giving thanks um hope y'all had a great thanksgiving hope y'all have a great winter holiday season my birthday is next week hey what's what you 35 oof Ooh, yeah shut up um i said 30 oh <laughs> i know Bill. yeah man time waits for no man and no woman Ooh. so y'all um we just gonna get right into it first of all Excuse me, I don't even know how to read our stats, but it says we have how many minutes of listen? Is that is that how many people listen to us? 1.9. No. I don't fucking know, dude. It says 1.9. So 1,900 minutes. I think that's the number of minutes that we were listened to. I don't fucking know. Oh. I, I just found out how to find it today. <laughs> like I, I was so mad because I, I found the rap for everyone else, but I was like, well, how do you look at your own shit? Then I had to right. go, then I had to go claim the podcast because I didn't even claim it. So I'm like, y'all niggas just let me post it and don't have you know no one attached as the owner. So I claimed it and then it showed me that. So apparently I now I can look at stats, which I have to work through. So I'm still working through some of this podcast stuff, man. We we still trying to work through it. Uh, but it's a learning process. Yeah, thank you all for the continued support and things of that nature. Um, but let's okay. I hate to even talk about this. Because we touch on this from time to time. But we got to talk about celebrities and their antics. And right now we're going to talk about Lizzo. Which is, in, well, first of all, let me not even start there. Um, rest in peace to Juice World. Um, I don't, I'm not the most familiar. Um, but I will say that it is sad whenever, you know, a young, or he just turned 21. Yeah. Like. He's just getting started in life, man, and yeah. I'm not going to speculate. I've seen on the internet a couple different things, and I hope, that, I really hope they're not true. I just hope man, they're not true. Man, if the one that I keep seeing in particular floating around, I honestly so, okay, hope it's not well, true. I'll just say yeah. it. So, one I saw floating around was basically, they had a lot of drugs on that plane. And mm-hmm. he was trying to hide it from the feds, and he swallowed a bunch of pills. That's one thing that I've heard. Um, and I think his bodyguard or somebody that was with him. Oh, what is going on? Actually got arrested. Um, so it, there's just a lot going on, man. Yeah, I'm like, there's no way y'all could be around in person and watch him do, like, Nobody. One well, my thing is like you flush it. No, like or nobody could take the rap for you. Or like, baby, you gotta realize it's jail. It's just some Percocets. Like you gonna get out. You famous. You gonna get out. You gonna get a slap on the wrist. Like I just really hope he did not take them pills trying to hide them from the feds. And I just honestly, I just, uh, it's just sad all the way around. It's just sad. I just feel bad. Yeah, I mean, logically, it doesn't even makes sense yeah it like from what i because i heard it was a lot of pills and i'm just like that's what i'm saying but like from the symptoms that they were giving or describing it sounds like it was like an anonymous overdose like he wasn't foaming at the mouth he was bleeding from the mouth so uh yeah that's so yeah yeah and they found guns and codeine and syrup when they yeah so it's just it's a lot, y'all. Y'all be careful. I know it's fun to have like recreational drugs and stuff. And if you do, I'm not here to judge you. I'm but judge I do you. ask that you I ask that you be careful. I'm gonna judge you. And be and be be mindful of what you do. It does and you know, it affects you, but it affects it can affect others around you as well. And if you feel like yours is getting out of control, please seek help. I think it's very um, interesting when we look at what's going on with artists in the era of music. Like our era, Biff was it was like the crunk whoop your ass drug. Right, that's drug what I'm saying. And like shooting music, which was still bad because we lost people to that as well. 
And now, you know, I I didn't coin this, y'all. I've heard a, a lot of other rappers say it, which is true. This is like the drug user era. Like, everyone's yeah. talking about yeah. popping this. I mean, y'all can listen to the music, popping this, sipping this. And I'm just like... Drinking this. Maybe that's yeah. why it's not... Maybe that's why I'm not really attached to a lot of the newer artists. Because it's like, nigga, that shit is not cool. <laughs> like, I guess... I mean, that I guess, or but, the fact that it's, just, it's not relatable at, to us at this point in yeah. our time. I'm like, we didn't already had our drug use fund. Thank goodness our drug use fund was just... Wait a minute. Don't, Nick, don't say that about me. I'm... <laughs> This, you didn't try to smoke, no? Like you, you I mean, ain't never I, tried I mean, to marijuana. Yeah, I mean, I've smoked weed that's before, but that's, that's that's the extent. Like that's what I'm saying. If you weed. ask a majority of people our age, what's the hardest drug you've done? Weed is it? Yeah, I didn't want to do anything. You know what I'm saying? Because all yeah, those drug yeah, that's campaigns what I'm saying. when I was a like, kid, with the, which need to come definitely. They need to bring Dare back. When I was a kid, that, I thought right. that was real. And when I watched movies and see people shooting up and sniffing coke, I was like, that don't look attractive at all. So, like, I've been turned off of drugs since I was a kid, man. I'm like, I don't need any more Well, Bev, habits. guess what happened? Dare's not coming back because all the, all the prices, drug prices are white people. Oh. So, it was, it was, drugs weren't cool when black people were doing it. But now that it's why it's happening to white people with the prices. We can't do Dare, baby. We got to figure out how to deal with it. Nah, niggas need to bring Dare back and, and get it to these kids. All right. But I'm just yeah, that's just, that shit's just crazy. Like they just it's like they it's glorified almost. It it is glorified, and it's crazy because like if you think about our era, of the shoot 'em and drug selling music, it wasn't the best music, but they were coming from a place, and it's different. It's cool because when you really analyze the music, they were coming from a place of I'm hustling, I'm in the hood, I got to do what I got to do to get the fuck out. I got to eat myself. right. And now these kids are just like. It's emotional and mental health. I'm depressed. Yeah. I'm sad. Yeah. But I'm just like this. What is going on in your life that is making you depressed and sad? Like, what is... These fucking boomers have ruined us. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like... Bill, like, okay. Where is our... What happened? To pay your, you don't have enough money to pay your goddamn rent. On top of that, you fucked around and had a kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to blame the kid and make the, you know, the reason yeah. why you're not doing well. So you still just going to struggle along. Again, you're not getting paid enough. They want twice as much you get. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's too much. It's On just, top of like yeah. student loan debt. On top of this, like you just can't even adult in peace. It's like as soon as you turn 18, they expect you to make like adult decisions. Like I still don't understand, which I wish I would have, you know, thought about or had my mom talk to me about it when I got older. Making like a life choice about what you want to do for the rest of your life at 17, 18 years old. Are you serious? You're you really, really think about that shit right. You have Nobody's to really sit there and solidly think about shit like that. Making a huge life choice at 17. Oh, I want to be a doctor. Oh, I want to be a lawyer. Oh, and then you, and then it's an expensive choice. And that's why I think um, when I become a parent, one of the things I think is extremely important is exposure. I'm going to expose my kid to a lot of different career fields and feed their interests and put them in whatever activities I can put them in. So they can know or have an idea of, hey, I like this, hey, I don't like that type deal. You know, there's no right or wrong, I don't think, because, you know, you're not going to know until you know shit. So, uh, but, yeah, I think exposure is a big thing. But to anyone out there that's listening that may be a younger listener, um, just be careful of what you take in. Like, yeah, the music of my era definitely influ influenced me. Um, you know what I'm saying? I had a little bit of a... Uh, a rough exterior and I fed into some of the music but not to a full extent I listened to specific artists who were eloquent in their explanations of what they were doing and why they were doing it so I was always cool and laid back but it was like yo you fuck with me I got something for you I wasn't out causing and starting trouble and I must admit that music did influence some of my behavior but it never controlled my life it never took over my life it never took me to a point to where I did something to myself or someone else because I heard it in a song and thought I should do that because I still had to think for myself and no one understand that this person that's rapping to me has millions and millions of dollars. He is not walking down the block with an AK-47 shooting niggas. That nigga went to the studio, <laughs> that nigga went to the studio and recorded and went back to his penthouse suite and did whatever, whatever. So, I, I you know, you have to understand that like, that was their past and they were doing what they had to do in that position um and i know that a lot of current artists since they're so young they may be speaking from a place of where they are now but i'm like yo y'all need to seriously get some help i know it's a lot of pressure and crazy to be super duper famous 
and have a ton of money when you're 21. I can't even tell All you right. how stupid I was when I was 21. I was just All stupid. Right. So I couldn't even imagine the pressure that comes with that. But there's so many resources and so many conversations about talking to someone and getting help for these things that you have the means and the resources to do it. So do it. Because the problem before was we just had to tough the shit out because no one talked about it. There weren't a bunch of therapists. It wasn't the thing to do. It was like, nigga, just work, be a man, work through it. Yeah. You had to fight through it. I wish I would have had some aid or some assistance, but y'all have that. Y'all need to take advantage of it, man. Stop. So I get getting addicted to these drugs and these pills. Like, take a fucking vacation. Pick up a new hobby. Do something different besides destroying your body, man. Like, that well, shit Well, Biff, I, no, Biff, I can't say it's a whole lot easier said than done. Now, I can't sit here I mean, and if I'm a million, I'm talking about I'm from them. I'm definitely, I'm a user, well, a recreation user myself. And I, I have used it in moments of coping. But... You are right. If you do feel like, like I said, if you feel like it's getting out of control, if your your habit has, a, you know, it's no longer coping. It's like an addiction. I'm talking See? about the artists who've made it. Like, if I got millions and millions of dollars, and I, you know, someone like you and me, it's harder. We still got to go to work. We got to pay. Like, we got to pay for it. Pay for it. But if I'm a millionaire and I'm dealing with these things, ain't no way I'm not gonna have an in in house doctor or something. Like, I gotta, or I gotta have the right people. Have the right people around you or something. You know, it's like when you're in that position, I would have to sit and say, well, damn, I have so much. What can I do about it? Like, it, it's it's different for people yeah. like you and me is what I'm saying. So, I mean, I well, get, you know, we go through what we go through. But it's just, it's sad to see that, man. I mean, especially under his circumstances. Like, you had a bunch of, allegedly, from what I just read from the Chicago Tribune, you had a bunch of shit which you, you shouldn't have had in the first place. That just it's just it's the people around yeah, you, people and it's around just you. like, bro, y'all being negligent as fuck on his money. And even if it was up to him, you so scared because you just want the check coming in. You living the life, you finally seeing the good life and stuff. You so scared that somebody gonna cancel it or take it away from you. You letting them make bad ass choices. That and uh, come on, man. But the other thing that fucks me up is we have seen more than enough examples of this to know better we have seen niggas yeah. don't get caught like the, yeah. the that that's the thing that gets me we have there's so many of these stories in hip-hop news it's like how like what that you He's know the third one this year, eh? yeah like not even the death just just the niggas doing dumb stuff and putting themselves in dumb ass situations you have seen it so much. It's like, why would you do that? You've seen other niggas. Right. You've seen other niggas do this enough to know. This ain't new. You've seen other niggas get caught with drugs. You you hear Nigga, old you've heads. you've flown enough to know not yes. to take no guns and shit to the airport. Like. Yes. Like, you have, like, some of this shit is just like, come on, bro. And I'm not blaming him That's because. That's what I'm saying. Like, the people around him are also negligent. Even yeah. if it, you know, yeah, you even if he know. was at fault, it's still people around him that's just as negligent as he was. Like, damn, y'all use some sense. When I like, get to a point where I feel like I need to have a bunch of guns on me, that means I need to hire security. Or I need right, to go get like licensed Juice firearms. Was like some beefing ass nigga. <laughs> so what do you need all this shit for? <laughs> Man, that's what I'm it. trying to figure out. Like if you was Takashi or some shit out here running around talking, you know, shit, some of my niggas ain't gonna do this at the fourth. I understand, but you sit here singing about mental health. What the hell you need guns for? Who you shooting at? So listen, um, this is from the Chicago Tribune. Mm -hmm. Uh. So it said he so he went into cardiac arrest as police and federal agents were searching his and his entourage's luggage for guns and drugs at a private hangar at Midway Airport over the weekend, according to law enforcement sources. The rapper's girlfriend, asked by police if he had any medical issues or had ingested any drugs, replied that he takes Percocet, a painkiller, and has a drug problem. They found the search turned up 41 vacuum sealed bags of marijuana six bottles of prescription codeine cough syrup two nine millimeters a 40 caliber a, um, a high capacity ammunition magazine and metal piercing bullets according to the sources two men identified by police as working security um for him were charged with misdemeanor offense for illegally possessing the guns and ammunition and i know they didn't blame all the drugs on that boy yeah, uh, they didn't. They're not saying right now. Um, it's just. I bet you that's what they're gonna do, Biff. Cause that's how the fuck you gonna get off that man. Can't can't defend yourself. 
Yeah. That's the fuck crazy. Like, Bruh, how do you have... What do you need that much weed for? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, All you have to do is be like, Toronto, I'm in your city. Where the tree at? And your shit's gonna blow. Your juice world is not like you don't know other celebrities. I'm in L.A. What's the spot? Like... Yeah. Bruh, Atlanta, you from Atlanta, like? I just, um, I don't. So it blows my mind, Biff. It blows my mind, bro. You have all the access and resources in this world, and you still choose to do stupid shit like that. So, um, Long was charged. One of the men, one of the guys, were the police said he was carrying two nine millimeter pistols in the magazine. A third gun was found in a camera case containing personal effects belonging to Christopher Long, but he did not think it was his. Later, Long was charged with unlawful possession of a firearm and misdemeanor. Dean was also charged with a misdemeanor for carrying concealed firearm at an airport and possessing a high-capacity magazine and metal piercing bullets. Police say Dean had a permit to carry the gun in Illinois, but weapons are banned from airports. Airports. What did I just say? Points? Um, <laughs> They have not mentioned the drugs anymore. I tell you, Biff, because they're putting the drugs on the on the body. But um, because there's no way you can disprove that. That's sad, man. Um, I it hate is. That, it is. I hate that someone that's 21 years old, you it's know, dead. is dead. Following behind, crazy behind it. That that of all things, man, like. Of of all things, of 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 always, if it's you know if it's true, we still don't know if he had a medical condition or if he ingested the drugs trying to hide him. It doesn't seem like he was trying to ingest the drugs trying to hide him because there are so many nigga you was gonna get caught anyway. Which so that doesn't yeah. really make sense to me. Forty one vacuum bags of weed, my nigga. Swallowing pills is not gonna help you. You're you're caught. Like if they search, nigga, they're gonna yeah. find that shit, y'all. There's nothing you could do. So some people are, you know, spreading the rumor saying he swallowed a bunch of pills. I would hope that's not true because it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. So rest in peace to Juice World, man. Um, we're gonna move on to the next topic. Um, still on hip hop, Lizzo. So I know uh, I know can, nothing. Can I, can I intro this? Okay. Okay, y'all. <laughs> let me go ahead and preface this shit by saying we i am not fat shaming body shaming i am not demeaning another black woman if anybody i'm a very proud and staunch supporter of lizzo but let's just get into this shit shoddy wore some assless chaps basically to the laker game and that shit got everybody in the uproar you got the half saying we trying to body shame her you know, you just we just mad because she's a confident big girl. Then we got another half saying nobody trying to body shame her. That shit was just tacky and tasteless. Um, it, it's all over the place, but where my opinion lies, like I like I said, I love Lizzo, but I just thought it was tacky. Um, regardless yeah. of, just regardless. First of all, you're at a public sponsored event and you're at a Lakers game. That's that's not the place for some assless chap. And don't sit here and say, oh, there's been other celebrities. Name them that's more assless chaps there. Especially the ones they like to name drop. Rihanna, Megan Thee Stallion, that, uh, that, to Drea. Me, I think that and that's really fucked when up. And when most of the time when they're showing skin, they're at work. Yeah, they're performing. music video, right. Right. They're not at the basketball game. If you Google Megan Thee Stallion at basketball games or if you Google Dre at football games, they're clothes they look good classy like don't try to tell me this shit was just tacky i'm sorry tacky is tacky it doesn't have nothing to do with her weight she can be a big girl and she can wear some fly ass shit she's had some fly ass clothes some fly ass outfits like i will give her credit but i'm not gonna give her no credit with no shit like that it was just tacky period i'm sorry i just not team lizzo on this one i i can't i can't handle it so okay I know nothing about Lizzo. Um, she's a she sings, right? Yeah. So <laughs> the way you said it. So you're a singer. You have a singing career. I know she had a really big performance earlier in the year, um, known for some of her outfits and antics. Um, I saw a picture floating around on Instagram that was allegedly her butt cheeks, which that wasn't cool. Um, and then this came out. So. 
Cause and I I wasn't looking for it. Like my Facebook was blowing up with people saying they're tired of her. I'm like, okay. And then when I saw the clip, you know, this is a double edged sword. Yes, there's freedom of speech and freedom of expression, and you can do what you want. And we're in this generation of embrace embracing you and being you. But I don't give a fuck who you are. When you have influence, shit is different for you. I'm sorry. It's different. I don't know a single influencer who hasn't made some types of changes or adjustments because of the influence that they have and the impact that they have. Rappers, all of them, eventually the mugs curve. Look at Jay-Z. Look at... Nas, look at the locks. Like, so many of these artists, when they come in, and this is the other thing, she's young. I don't know how old she is, but I'm pretty sure she's super young. Um, when you come into your own and you have this influence, I believe you have a greater responsibility, man. Like, that's a public event. Kids are there, and you are a black woman. I don't care about your size, your weight, or whatever. We all know that... Black people are under attack in this country, and people have preconceived notions and stereotypes about us, and that type of behavior behavior perpetuates it. When you're on a pedestal where hundreds of thousands or possibly millions of people are watching you, you're representative of yourself and your culture, whether you want to be or not. That's just the way it is. And yes, you have the freedom to choose what you want to do with that. Cool. But you also got to live with what comes along with it. So now, you know, you saying, and, you know, she posted a response video, which was nothing but a big contradiction to me because you saying, oh, my feelings aren't hurt. Negativity doesn't bother me. If it doesn't bother you and it has no place in your life, why are you responding? Like, if something doesn't that's, bother you, that's it what doesn't. Killed me. Yeah, if I heard it <laughs> then say, you, I'm you so, ignore like, it. unbothered and shit, right? But then you come out and post the IG video. Baby girl, you are bothered. Just say, okay, y'all, I took this L. I shouldn't have worn no assless chap. Mm-hmm. Everybody had their little fashion blunders. Everybody don't have. Everybody don't make the best decision. But I hate when they all try to make it seem like, you know, like. And don't throw the other black women under the bus. Don't do that. Right. Don't don't, don't name drop say... other celebrities who've done things because I'm pretty sure there's other celebrities who've done things and people have said things and you're trying to make it about your weight. Right. And, and I'm like, saying- I don't want to see that. If I'm watching a Lakers game, I want to see the Lakers play. I don't want to see anybody's ass. Like I'm here to see the game. If I want to look at ass, I'll go on Pornhub or whatever. I know where to go find ass or I go on IG where I can find ass. Like I don't, that's not, that's not what I want to see. And I, I don't think that's a very good representation. And the other thing is, you know, granted, you are up and coming star, so you need business opportunities to keep your career going. Any and everybody in music will tell you, yo, the money's not in the music, it's from the opportunities that come from doing the music. And everyone's not willing to wheel and deal with every personality type. An exception to the rule is Cardi B with her background and her craziness. But people love her so much because she's so down to earth. But no, honest. that's no. But, but listen, Cardi's authentic. That's, that's what I'm saying. That, that's who she is, and her background matches it. When you look at, you know, she was a stripper. She hustled. She had to do what she had to do. It's like no wonder you act like that. Look at where you came from. So it's like I can't really be mad at you. Like look at how you came through and came to be this. So a lot of brands look at that and say, cash cow, let's, let's do that. And I feel like whenever that happens, it births others who feel like, well, if they can do it, I can do it too. That's not necessarily the case. Some people are just the exception to the rule and they are an anomaly that make it yeah. squeeze through. But I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not looking, the world's not looking for 10, 15, 20 Cardi B's. Nobody, you know, Right, it's, but it's, my it's whole thing much. is people are taking this, like, they're making their opinion and it's supposed to be fact. I think it was tacky. I didn't like yeah. it. That doesn't mean that I'm body shaming her. That doesn't mean yeah. that I'm calling her a fat ass. That doesn't mean that I think any less of her. I just thought it was tacky. I agree. You can't win them all sometimes. That's, that's it. Okay, everybody, like I said, everybody has a little fashion blunders even the best even the best dress i've had from questionable girl what the hell are you wearing like so i mean it comes to the best and i hate people like they're just picking on her because she's fat no we pick no. on everybody it, it, especially the black community 
This is the second time we've you seen are. your ass, man. Like, what's going on? I'm telling you, like, you talking about when I'm talking about Drea. When Drea put up that non-cooked ass food, then you know she got fried. That girl left <laughs> social media for some time. And when we found out she left her little boy at the damn house, do you know we fried her ass too? It don't matter who you are, yeah. what you look like. We're going to talk about you. That's part of being on that pedestal, man. Look at like Ti, like er, all, everyone has fallen victim. Nah, right. Everybody has fallen victim to be a celebrity. When Jay Z got beat the fuck up on the elevator, that yo, shit ran forever. He, it the joke still goes on about him getting beat the fuck yo, up. So don't try to say we point you out because you black and fat. We point you out because that shit was funny. Now he's a billionaire, but nothing's funnier than that meme with him and uh, <laughs> him be outside the elevator. He like low key pressing the button and talking about when you see Salon trying to get him to the elevator when the door's closed. Yo, that shit is funny. Or him on the uh, jet ski with the helmet on. <laughs> Jay said, "Y'all not about to get me out here in these streets." But if you are a celebrity and you happen to be listening to this, um. With great, Uncle Ben said it from Spider Man. With great power comes great responsibility, man. Be a bit more responsible with your platform. We not even big like that, you know what I'm saying? But and yes, we speak raw and uncut. But this is a show for kids. I mean, not for kids. Jeez, this <laughs> Damn, is a show Bill. for my bad. <laughs> this is a show for adults. We cater to adults, and even right. to a certain extent, there's certain topics I won't even let people touch because I'm like, that's too controversial. We not trying to go too far left. You know what I'm saying? So, Alex. Oh, wait. He Alex wanted to be on, one. too. <laughs> he never hit me up. Uh, but, yeah, that hit. <laughs> He'll be all right. But, yeah, so I just think um, just not just Lizzo, but any and all celebrities who are out here doing some of this, these dumb antics, man, y'all got to relax. You're under a microscope. You're under a microscope now. And you're open to everyone's opinion. You're taking everyone's money and everyone's likes and everyone's attention. So you're going to get these opinions, too. Hello. That that money ain't free. (laughs) That money is not free. So I'll leave that at that. But if you got anything else to add. No, I should live. It ain't the end of the world. Oh, well, girl. We didn't see your bare ass more than one time. You got a long ass crack. That's about it. Yo, you got (laughs) a. Bill, she do got a long ass ass crack. She got long ass. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she got long ass. I didn't look at it that much to to get all those details. But, but she was, posted ass like every other day. I don't. She I, is I, very, I don't, very 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 body positive. I don't. Really her. dope. Don't she got long her. crack though. You know, and that, it, 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 it's funny when you talk about a, a larger woman. It makes me think of Monique and how she used to always love herself and say how fabulous and beautiful she was and didn't have to show any skin to do it. Yeah. Um, all right. She's still beautiful. Exactly. She done lost weight now. She be trying to call herself big. I'm like, Monique, you low-key skinny. All right. So, Biff also said, um, there's two more topics. We're going to talk about the Mike Fick thing last, but, um, Arby's took over Buffalo Wild Wings. We laugh, but that's a big move. Y'all, do y'all know Arby's is worth $1.7 billion? Arby's food is good, though. I didn't know Ain't that. Ain't nobody eating Arby's like that, Biff. I wonder what the fuck Somebody they doing is to bring in that, that damn that. revenue. I'm, I'm telling you, $1.7 billion? I'm about to see how much their stock is worth right now. Oh, shit. They're not even under Arby's. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, yeah. I'm a, Damn! I tell you, Biff. No, I'm looking at Domino's. $285 oh. a share. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's high. Right. Y'all better get on right. Y'all better get on the food places, man. Oh I know that was just really random. I know I threw that out there. I showed Bib. That was really random, but I just thought everybody should know that Arby's is really out here, nigga. Domino's Arby's is really out here. Than, uh, Domino's cost more than McDonald's. McDonald's. McDonald's oh, almost. They still going. They still. Oh, he's had to see you, dummy. Okay. He's still getting pulled over. Who got pulled? What are you talking about? A nigga had his lights off, and then the cops. Uh, through the lights on his ass, and then he tried to turn them on. I guess thinking the cops was gonna turn his lights off, but nah. you got caught now, dummy. It's dark. Turn your lights on. Um, that yeah. just brings me to something. Um, like Biff said, that that brought up something to me though. Like, yo, as we get older, y'all start investing your money in stocks. Like, 
Just well, no, Bill. You know what? I read a thread on Twitter the other day. Is it really investing or is it gambling? It's both. Um, it's a little bit of both. Um, it's not as bad as gambling, I don't think. Because I put in like $100 and I went up to like 138 and I just let it sit and now it's like at $78. But I don't miss it because I did it so long ago. But it just sits and it ebbs and it flows. But I think there's a pattern to it. If you watch it, you know, looking at certain wait, mergers. Wait, 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 what in the world? Oh, he's like, like, sorry, Bess. He was trying to, it's really dark and we're trying to get back to where my mom that park is talking. Are you on the block? What was that noise? <laughs> we were trying not to crash in the middle of a road. Oh, okay. Biff is so alive. But um, if you're going to invest in stocks, I'm not the person to talk to about that. All I do is, one piece of advice that I've heard from a lot of people is invest in the companies that you use every day around your house and just pay attention um, to what's going on. Because you could catch, you know, you could catch a nice little nice little flip. Um, but hopefully that, uh, that, that merger, they, they do some rebranding with the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings because, uh, yeah. Put some more sauce on them damn wings. Yeah. <laughs> I like regular wild wings way better. Way yeah. better. Um, even though I don't have one up here. Um, and hopefully their customer service and uh, the racism stuff that we've been seeing, which I believe are anomalies, hope that fades as well. Like, Arby's I don't know, man. Right. It happened right here in goddamn Columbia. Oh, sheesh. Right. So I don't know. But it's also South Carolina too, so that's not exactly yeah. an anomaly here. You can't escape it, man. You, can't yeah. escape it. you would think that people uh, would just, you know, realize that it's a moot point. Like, just get rid of that shit, man. But, you know, people going people. So, let's go ahead and get on to the last topic. We're not a financial analyst here. Yeah, I know. There's people like, damn, y'all talked about that shit for two minutes. Shut up. Mike, Vic. Biff, do you want to do this one? You can start the intro, Biff. I'm about to switch cars. They're switching cars. Um, so, what are you listening to? Three Six Mafia? Uh, <laughs> you are correct. We are Project wow. Pac-Man in this car. You are correct, Bill. So there's All a right. petition. There's a petition to stop Michael Vick from being a Legends captain at the 2020 Pro Bowl. Um, I have no idea what that means. <clears throat> um, basically. For those of you who don't know, who know nothing about, let me see. What the, let me see what the hell this means. Calling for Mike Vinnie as a Pro Bowl captain. Da, 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 da. Um, wow. So, he was supposed to be an honorary captain of the Pro Bowl team. Um, and people are signing a petition to not have him do that. It looks like. The main cause was from, I don't remember how long ago this was, but he was arrested for being tied to illegal dog fighting. I forgot. Yeah, I I think he was like the host of the ring. It was on his properties or some shit like that. Yeah, I, uh, like it, oh, it was in 2007. What the few motherfuckers in 2007, bro? Yeah, I'm um, trying to tell you. Damn, like, I didn't realize it was that long ago. That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> man, had been to jail and came back, played, retired. <laughs> right. So this guy has been back. You know, um, he served. He 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 served his time. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like. You know, they gave this man real deal time over this shit. They be letting people walk with it every day. Right, Because these people exactly. made all the damn, damn show out of this shit. Right. So they're signing that because they feel a way. And someone made a very important post. They said, y'all feel like this about Michael Vick, but look at these motherfuckers. And there's a bunch of hunters. That nigga hunters. Jimmy John, like, killing wild animals for fun. Like. Yeah. Yeah, they just showed I'm, a bunch I'm sitting of here trying to figure it out. Kill, right. Yeah. He is. It's a double standard, but then I just seen yeah. an article not too long ago. It's like, America don't forgive a black man. They don't. they don't. Now y'all sit here and scream all day, do your time. Once you do your time, you go back and integrate into society. Be, you know, something worth society. That man did his time. That man worked for adv- advocacy groups for animal care. That man got them donated money to all these animal people. His daughter couldn't even get a damn dog if she wanted to, because I'm pretty sure she'd be harassed if she fucking tried. Yeah. 
but y'all still he needs to so every time I ask so what else needs to be done there's never an answer Bill just yeah. say that shit is racial and imp- that's implicit racial bias just say you, you you just mad a black man and came back you just mad a black man ain't stay down once you try to put him down you that's mad. your issue you're mad because he changed his mindset and changed his ways which is that's right the, that's the goal like that's what you're supposed to do when you make a mistake you're supposed to change your ways and come back better and do things the right way and that's what he's doing um, right and they're mad because he wasn't one of the ones that just fell off the face of the earth after he went to jail yep nope he was like nah, I'm just, no no gonna be around but there's, right. there's murderers, there's rapists in the NFL, like... They have homophobics, yeah. racists, everything else yeah. you want to call in damn NFL, and y'all ain't got a problem, ain't said a damn word. And here's the thing, fuck the NFL, there's some, some of them people that signed that position, petition, your homeboy probably did some some worse shit, you've probably done some of the worst shit, I'm some people in the same you. building that you work in now, but you wouldn't keep that energy with them, you wouldn't say shit. But because why, it, it just pisses me off, you know. That's why, yeah. like, I'm in this, I'm in a bunch of like doggy groups because you know, I like love the animals and shit. Yeah. And they sitting there keep posting their petitions and shit, and I'm just be trolling them. I'm like, um, there was one, some nigga, I don't even know, I'm probably man, nigga, some dude, some guy from like uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Seahawks or something was like. I don't know, it had something to do with the dogs, like doing the animal, had an animal shelter, donate to the animal shelter or something, and they was like. Well, how come um, we should use this guy to coach Pro Bowl instead of Michael Vick? And I was like, well, that nigga ain't got no 99 rating on man, so I'm no. hanging up. <laughs> he wasn't the chosen one, guys. Like, right. What do we do? Get yeah, out of here. The, the closest thing to him is um, my little boo thing. That's up in what? Baltimore now. So I'm hanging up. Uh, that's, that's it. Like I'm just I'm over it, y'all. Just say just just be honest with yourself. You just mad because the black man just didn't want to fall down. That's it. Because there's absolutely no reason to be mad at him. He paid his debts. That's what you wanted. He paid his debts back to society. He even did beyond. He even went beyond that. Yeah. And you still mad. And he ain't even playing. He's just coaching. Y'all some hating ass. That's some hating ass shit. Here's my other thing, man. Like. Who are y'all? Like, are you perfect? Like, I understand being upset and being angry with someone and being upset and angry over something that someone did. And, yes, you heal in your own time, in your own way. But, God damn, bro, 2007? Bro, 12 years later, you still (laughs) mad. And he got caught caught in trouble, paid the price, lost the opportunity to be in the NFL for Like, he paid – he was one of the rare few. The rare few athletes, big athletes, usually the big athletes get off. Usually they right. get off and get a slap on the wrist. He got like dragged, super duper dragged. And he was like almost like, he was like at the peak of his career. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, he lost a lot more than people would ever realize. And it's like, you know, what you did was fucked up. Yeah, but I'm not going to hold it against you forever. Ever. I'm not perfect. Some of the people the that point is to grow and learn from it. on their husband and wife right now. Like, I'm <laughs> that, that's nigga ain't kind of the man are. probably ain't even looked at a damn dog. And y'all still trying to get him out of there. Like, he, he don't want to do nothing but stand on the field with a mic in his face. Like, what, what is that doing to you? How is that affecting you? So, you know, the severity, the severity of it and... You know all that good stuff. I mean, you know, there, there's you know what, so Bip, many it layers. just goes to show in America that uh, animal life is valued more than a black person's life. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I yeah. believe that. Yeah, it's never well, an issue until certain, a dog's life is lost. Animals or, or a dog, you can't fuck with dogs, bro. Yeah, can't fuck with dogs. You kill the fuck out of a deer, though. But a dog, <laughs> yeah, you know, but. Um, y'all feel the way y'all want to feel, man. Uh, you're you're entitled to your thoughts, feelings. And I mean, that's business. cool. And I'm also like, going to be one of the people that's going to troll you because that man did what he needed to do. So y'all can kiss my ass. And it don't matter whether he was black, white, or whomever. If it had been somebody white. Because I, I have a, a very close family member that's incarcerated. I'm all about that fairness. You did your time. You did your crime. You did your time. All right. That's it. Yeah. It's like, what, just just what, like what, your what? ass getting put in time out when you a toddler from doing some shit you ain't had no business doing. Here's you do the, the crime, thing. you do the time. And here's the other thing, you know, that people don't think about. These are human beings. We have the luxury of being able to hide behind a computer or go through our everyday lives and fuck up, and damn near nobody ever knows about it. Imagine yeah. if your fuck up is spread across the entire country and your face 
and all world. your business is spread across the entire country or world. Like, right. how would you feel? You know what I'm saying? You would want someone right. to be like, well, goddamn, ease up off me, especially if you right. got caught and you paid for it. And then you try to move. All you're trying to do is move forward with your life, do better with your life, and people will not let you. It's not fair. And to be honest, that man has been moving so gracefully since he's been in pro- I, once he was done with his incarceration. Yeah. Like, it could have been a million times it, he could have snapped and be like, damn, you're, like you said, get off my nuts. Damn, I done did what I need to do. What more do you want? So, I mean, the kudos to Michael Vick. He's still one of my favorite NFL players of all time. He's one of the few reasons I even enjoy football. So, I'm going to defend my man's honor. What he did was wrong, but he paid, you know, he paid the price and did what he needed to do, and he bounced back. So, and also kudos to everybody that did give up on him, especially like Tony. What's it, Tony Dungy, I think? Okay. Is that his last name? The Indianapolis coach, yeah, that didn't give up on him. That was a mentor that was, like, vouching for him to get back in the NFL. Like, stuff like that. People that didn't give up on him because they know it was just an honest mistake. Like, you, that stuff I love to see. So, the more I see that, the more I'm the more I'm going to fight against the people that want, you know, negative to happen to them. Yeah. So, so Mike Vick. <clears throat> so, in closing, ladies and gentlemen, um, couple things number one thank you for listening thank you for the support this year keep it going the year is not over um you know you can hit us up fme underscore podcast on instagram from my experience podcast on facebook and from my experience podcast at gmail.com all the other links and shit will be in the description couple of announcements for you all and biff don't even know this shit um I have been talking to a friend who builds websites and we'll probably have our website. Uh, my goal is March, uh, by March of next year, we'll have a website where we can put blog posts and a bit more intimate details about some of the things that we talk about and we can kind of carry the conversation um, off of Facebook and onto our own platform Ooh. where we have more control. Um, we are also probably going to have a little bit of merch. I'm looking at a couple of different Ooh. vendors. So um, we're going to look at a little bit of merch and things of that nature to get y'all some From My Experience podcast merch. And um, we did not do, and we're not going to do a holiday giveaway because my bae comes first and my family comes first and I ain't got no money for y'all. So i'm telling you Beth. like it's been a doozy this motherfucking year and thank goodness yeah, yeah. i you know i'm coming i'm coming into a little bit of change thank goodness but still that's like you said that's i'm catching up on shit because i have been sick so i'm yeah. catching back up on shit and i'm trying to be responsible because i ain't even gonna lie i wanted to ball out for the season but i'm like yo let me just go ahead and catch back up and then i'm also trying to move too so yeah Gotta gotta relax and uh, same uh, here, man. I can't adulting, even really get man. It. Like, don't you Who's hate telling? when you like you like looking at the money? You like, I could do so much. Man, with, this was with it, and it's just ago, like I had to get that Xbox Elite controller, the new one that came out. But I was like, there's a lot more I can do with two hundred dollars, and I think I'm gonna do that instead. I'm gonna just be patient. Yeah. So, um, moral of the story, guys, um, in your experience of the evening. Uh, number one, be responsible with your power and your influence, no matter how big your platform is. Somebody's watching, someone's listening. So think about who you're catering to, thinking about who your audience is, and think about who you're affecting with what you say and what you do. And also remember that forgiveness is very big and very important. No, no one is perfect. No one is above fault. And any one of us can fall at a moment's notice just by even being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So don't be so judgmental, so hard on other people, especially once they've made their mistake, they've apologized, and they've done what they need to do to make up for it and serve their time and pay the con- and pay the price and suffer the consequences. Like, what more do you want? So um, that's it for me. Thank you all for listening. We will be back again next week. My birthday's next week. I'm not really doing much for my birthday. Unless my bae comes down and does something this coming weekend. I don't know. We'll see. Are you hand dropping? No, we talk about it. I'm not a big birthday person. Chocolate. Hit my man up. Oh, my God. Uh, Everyone knows I'm not a big (laughs) birthday person because my birthday 
you know, so close Christmas. to Christmas, I can't really. Did you see Christmas. that? It's a meme with. Um... Don't you do it. Don't you talk about that meme. <laughs> I was so. Alex posted that shit. <laughs> Talk about Christmas, December birthdays. They birthdays, fused. yeah. It was a, it was a, who was it? It was a black bear and a white polar bear, and they fused and made a panda it's bear. A panda. And it said birthday gifts, <laughs> Christmas gift. gifts, December no December birthdays, Christmas gifts. And they merged and made one gift. I was like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> it's true. It's true. My mom might throw me a couple of dollars. My girl, I know she, my girl's gonna do something for me. Um, yeah. That'll probably be about it. But I'm so used to that shit, it doesn't even bother me. Um, I do wish, well, I'm not going to say that. My The biggest gift to myself was being able to move and settle in um, in my new state and have the things that I have now. That's like a blessing. I can't complain about anything. Next year, I want to go on a trip for my birthday, though. Um, Bae's going on a trip for her birthday. Well, I'm going with her. So I'm going to do a better job of planning for next year. That's... Uh, I'm a little early, but that's one of my New Year's resolutions. Like, I want to start planning for shit ahead of time. Like, I want to be a year ahead of my plans. Yeah. So, all right, I'm rambling. 45 minutes, Biff. We did a long one I know, today. Right? I know. We thought it was supposed to do short and sweet, but goddamn, that juice world got us going, though. That was really, that's something we was really passionate about because that was just, that, that affects our community way too much. Yeah. I need but, you guys, change. we will catch you next week. So, you stay you, stay proud, stay black, and stay down. And we will catch you next week, you guys. Peace. Peace.